replaced it with absolute cool silence. <laughs> Instead of... Well, yeah, so we're recording now. Because earlier, yeah, you're not going to hear that part of the show. Oh, I'm Joe. Uh, my name is AJ. And, and today... Welcome out to... This is what... Lin- uh, yeah. <laughs> Words. <laughs> and welcome out to... Third Linux, episode 53, where we talk about our Linux lives or our lives in Linux and stuff in the third, in the world. third world. Yeah. <laughs> speaking, of stu- <laughs> speaking of stuff that isn't third world, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> but we have that here. Yeah. We have that here, though, at least. Yeah, yeah, we do, but like... uh Yeah. Yeah. I got the old MacBook Pro working again. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to think of a transition to the, but pretty soon, if you do development, you're not going to be needing it because, um, <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry, listeners. Uh, yeah, Swift, um, last, Last year, it might have been, or two years ago at the WWDC, uh, they announced Swift, which was supposed to replace Coco or C Sharp or whatever it is that you develop iOS apps on, um, with Swift. And, uh, last week or whatever, when the WWDC, which is the developer conference, um, happened, they, uh, announced Swift 2.0, which would be open source and, um, would be available for OS 10 or OS X or whatever and mm-hmm. uh, for Linux which is good I guess so now you can develop iOS apps on Linux yay confusing <laughs> but yay <laughs> and um well, what I find interesting though is that they don't have Windows support or hey yeah. now but then, like, whatever, like, I'm not sure how development works, right? But, like, my understanding of development is you have, like, a text file and you write stuff in it. Mm-hmm. But then I, I don't know how, like, Swift works because, you know, I'm totally not a developer. So. Yeah. yeah. But uh, at least we know that if you develop on Linux, you can now develop on iOS using the Swift code. Yeah. It's going to be Swift. I'm still bemused, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still bemused, to be honest, why it exists at the first place. But at least, you know, there is a way. <laughs> yeah, because, like, it, you know. again, yeah, to cater to a market, to have, you know, to attract developers. Hey, you're also developing for Android. Why don't you develop our iOS as well? well but then the thing about, um, the thing about iOS, though, is like developers tend to target iOS first because that's where the money is. Like, Android users tend not to pay and stuff yeah so. yeah even though it is uh it's a large population but if you were if you have something free or at least um it has a wide user base so you could target ads with that i'm not sure how those ads translate to money though not very well as it turns out exactly <laughs> but yeah so so like exactly. people um so developers like tend to target ios for their development and sort of Think of um, Android, I think, as an afterthought. As secondary. At, yeah, or at or least secondary. Yeah. Or at least for the premier development studios. Um, yeah. So I, I have no idea why they're going open source. Um, other than, I, I guess, a lot of their um, a lot of their developers use Linux. Like, you know. Hey now. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's an. O- not OS X, what's up, what I say? It's a Unix, I mean, you know, keeping it in the Unix family, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess. Or, you know, I don't know. But yay, open source <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, at least, you know, there's a development from them. I mean, and, and speaking of new developments in open source, E3 starts tomorrow. And something that's gonna come out in E3 at least, or hopefully have an announcement, is an actual Steam box. <laughs> Fearless predictions, even though this is coming out after E3. Yeah, so we're probably <laughs> wrong. 
Oh man. Um. Yeah. But at least, at least, finally, Steam boxes. You know. Mm. I still not sure if. You know what? I'm looking for like a gaming setup. It's just that Steam box is still what do you call this? Uh, OS, um, Steam OS, which is Linux, meaning EA will never ever put anything in there. And I just want to play 2K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. play 2K. I want to play some Monster Hunter. Like, uh, the games I want to play are in different plat- platforms. And I want to play Witcher. Ugh. I think Steam, yes. Witcher will have be on Steam, but. Yeah, yeah, because <sighs> they, um, <laughs> we we talked about this before, I think. Like we mentioned it on the show that Witcher, uh, th- there was that company that ported Witcher Two, or Witcher Two is currently being ported or something. I remember, yeah. like we mentioned that before. Uh, Witcher Two is now is on Linux already. In one of our previous episodes, huh? Yeah, Witcher w- Witcher One and Two, I know is on uh, Witcher One, not yet. Witcher Two is on Linux. I'm not sure about Witcher Three if it's on Linux. Okay, I searched for Steam Box on DuckDuckGo. And um, the little bar on top says that a steam box is a long sealed container used to steam wooden planks for the purpose of making them pliable. Uh, go for a steam machine. <laughs> a Wikipedia entry about like steam boxes. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm at the steam store right now. And I'm going to browse steam machines because I want one. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, they're called steam uh, machines. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, not steam boxes anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the uh, first entry. Okay, this one's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one is an Alienware. Right now, I'm looking at an Alienware steam machine. Yeah. Mm, 1080p, GeForce GTX, two gig DDR5. Um, the, I think the cheapest one is is it is it the Alienware one? Yeah, the most expensive one is uh, Falcon Tiki right now. I'm sure the Third World Gaming boys probably know this a lot better. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, it looks like the lowest price is the one by Alienware of all things. Huh. huh. You know, we could probably but build one. This is pretty much... We could probably build one. Uh, but if that's the case, uh, I could probably build one. Yeah. Do you know? But then again... <laughs> But Leica just came out with new stuff, and people are selling their things, and I, I really want to buy some stuff for my photography equipment. <laughs> and Sony is like came up with new stuff as well. So, again, you know, with limited finances, uh, might not be able to. <laughs> okay. But it looks, um, for me personally, it finally looks promising. And finally, they're just, you know what? Let's go on ahead and pull it up. Uh, Push it out there. The biggest, uh, the biggest downside I'm seeing is people are just gonna get confused when this comes out. Like, what are we gonna do with it? Eh, I guess. Well, I, I would, I wouldn't know because, like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess it depends on like how much they tweak SteamOS. Like, I haven't used it, um, so. You know, and like I haven't really played on a console in years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like, I haven't played a console in, with the exception of probably dropping by in TWG, right? I mean, I haven't owned a console in years as well. Yeah, but then even when I play with the third world gaming guys, we're playing like fucking arcade games and stuff. PC games. <laughs> <laughs> like these indie arcade games, which. You know, you don't really need, like, a top-of-the-line, or yeah. you don't really need, like, an Xbox, or not an Xbox, like, a, a PS4, or whatever it is that Paolo has. PS3. Does he have a PS4? I have no idea. See, that, that's how totally out know. of it I am. Like, like I, I have no idea what a PS4 looks like. But, yeah, I mean, I didn't mind gaming on on linux i mean it was as much as miko gives flack for it like ironic gamer gives me flack for it i mean doesn't know how well it does perform i mean i have a medium low end to medium spec rig and it still runs everything it's just that you know it burned out because i was overplaying but <laughs> that, 
if if he has a if if, uh, if if ironic gamer ever gives you shit for like gaming on Linux, tell him to stop gaming on a Mac <laughs> <laughs> and buy an Xbox. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Or better yet, not an Xbox, a 3DS. No, um, or a is, Steam uh, machine. A Steam machine, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> or any gaming console device ever, no. But, um, I hope it does well. Uh, that's all I can say. And I hope, I hope this is, uh, uh, they can, uh since it's, you know, uh, what do you call this? You can choose. Um, they're, they're touting, they're touting like if you go to the Steam website and you click Steam machines, one of the copies in there is like finally multiple choice and yeah, finally a multiple choice answer. But on the price points, we're not seeing high end machine. Uh, we're not seeing third worldable machines. Yeah, because they're going after the same market that'll buy an Xbox One, which is about the same price as your Alienware Steam machine right here. All right, let's look at Xbox One price. Xbone. <laughs> I really wrote Xbone price. <laughs> oh, I wonder what. Oh, Xbox One is just three hundred fifty dollars right now. At That's launch. That's a at one launch. terabyte console. Oh, well, how much was, at launch, how much was it at it launch? Uh, Xbox One price at launch. Uh, eh, four ninety nine. Yeah, it was four ninety nine at launch, but now it's three forty nine. You're not gonna compete at launch. You're competing with the prices now. Yeah, but if you granted, granted, if, I think um, I mean um, PC games are like like the the PC is much better than the console in terms of what yeah, you that, can do with Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say them, next. Right? Like yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was gonna say. Granted, you could do a lot more with a PC, but putting it on a box dedicated to just gaming, it's kinda, huh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I actually find that really cool. But, like. I mean, uh, I like it. I, don't, don't get me wrong. I like it because, you know me, I like when a thing only does one thing. One thing does it like, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and does it really well. And if you're gaming on Steam, this would be it. And there's an option to have the Steam controller, or I think there's also an option to just put in a USB keyboard and a USB mouse, and you're good. But it, it, my worry is the pricing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it depends on how they market uh, it, though. Like, uh, because for like a high-end PC, um, you know, a thousand dollars isn't unreasonable, right? Yeah. I mean, no. Um. For medium-sized rigs, you need around five hundred dollars, which is roughly thirty-five to forty-five thousand pesos. And for the good ones, you need yeah a thousand dollars. But if you want to push it further, you could clock in around one five, and that's like up to two thousand, and that's like amazing setup already. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Wait, no, I don't have to worry about speakers because uh oh, five thousand dollar. Core i7. Steam blah, machine? Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be... Those $5,000 rigs are those i7 ones with like 600, 128 memory or something. I don't know. Yeah. But then again, you know... Although I'm... um, Although I, 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 I maintain that they're doing the right thing in the sense that your lowest priced one is at $450, which is pretty much the price of a console at launch. And is comparatively better than the PS4 and the, the Xbox One was at launch. It's it's cheaper than it, it's cheaper than the Xbox One was at launch, and it yeah. performs better. And um, having that as the one with the lowest price point, I think makes sense because if there's anything lower than that, I get the feeling that they sort of know their market. Because as between paying like two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars for a Steam machine, somebody that can afford to shell out two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars is probably going to build their own rig to get a little bit more performance out of it, because it's always cheaper to build something from scratch for the same um, 
performance price ratio or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm saying. And, and come to think of it, and come to think of it, I now I don't have like uh, aside from that fact, like another thing that I I don't mind I guess now after realizing is with the pricing, is you're gonna save a lot of money in the games anyway. You're gonna digital download. Oh the games. yeah, you're Most not paying them, sixty dollars per game. Exactly, you're not gonna pay sixty dollars for games anyway. That's what I realized. Like, yeah, that's one of the things that's nice about gaming with Steam. All those like the indie bundles, uh, all of them has to come with a Steam ID, right? And then um, what do you call this? It, what, Steam sale, which is, again gonna start tomorrow. So prepare your wallets. I'm gonna move away from that. <laughs> Uh, third world gaming yeah, guys are gonna I mean, have a field day. They're gonna have a field day, and I'm not sure if we're <laughs> gonna do a report or special. I mean, personally, if if I can, I want what I want to do with them is we could just hop on Minecraft and then have a podcast type thing while we're doing something in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, just to pass the time, you know, something like that. Yeah, that's that's actually um that will save it for the off tangent. Um, speaking yeah. of Linux, but, uh, oh wait, no, good. Yeah, do you have anything else on no. Steam machines? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to add uh, because of at least that price. Um, I, 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 I. What I wonder now is, are people gonna who have consoles also gonna buy a Steam box? But here in the third world, you only have personally, you only have a budget for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think though that if uh, Steam OS takes off. Like we're going to see a drop in console sales in developing countries because oh. because in terms of value for money, right? Uh, you get more performance mm-hmm. out of something that's as expensive or just just about the same price plus cheaper games. If you just want a game, because at the end of the day, most of the gaming here in the and I think. I think the TWG guys made an episode about this way back that, um, that, what do you call it? Mm, it's the train of thought. Okay. That the games played here are not so much your quote unquote hardcore games. People still think Candy Crush people, or, or if they want to do gaming, they want to play NBA 2K and that's it. They could play that for the entire year. Yeah. That and probably one AAA game like, yeah, Witcher was announced, so we're gonna play that, and, and that's pretty much it. Nobody touches some of the indie titles. Like, I, I, I hardly can speak to anyone here about some of the indie games that I absolutely love. And, well, you, you know what's gonna make the Steam I, Machine, you know what's gonna make the Steam Machine fly in the Philippines? Mm. Dota. With a controller? Oh, I mean, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> With, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not contesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty Find much. Find the segue. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the segue. That's pretty much gonna make it there. Uh, uh, segue. Yeah, you, you can was, play Dota uh, on your bedroom. Yeah, yeah dude, segue. on your TV. Speaking of TVs. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good segue. Um. <laughs> All right, good segue. Good segue. Good, good save, segue. Good uh, I'm never going to be able to really use it, but. Uh, my mother got a new TV, a Lucky Gold Star. Which is? <laughs> I'm old school, man. We call it Lucky Gold Star. She got an LG, which <laughs> apparently runs WebOS 2.0. And when you told me that I was running WebOS, <laughs> I thought they faced that out. They had a fire sale. It and lives. Just to sell out those tablets. It lives. It totally lives. Did, did you uh, manage to check it out or anything? Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. So, so, so apparently, um, after HP, uh, after HP, like LG, um, took it and put it on their TVs. Which is a weird choice of UI. <laughs> uh, yeah. Weird choice of OS. Well, I, I, um, I, I guess they tweaked the UI. I mean, like, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen it. Um, I'll, like more updates as 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 that comes, right? But yeah, I mean that's something I want to hear. Like I want you to tinker with it, see the integration. I'm not sure if uh, is it a smart TV? One of them smart TVs that they're touting. I have no idea. I'm probably just gonna plug my MK802 in it and like use it as. <laughs> <computer>. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's uh got WebOS on it, 
which is like really trippy. Uh, it's it's uh, apparently it's an Apache license, so um, yeah, it's licensed under Apache, uh, Linux <laughs> kernel, written in C plus plus. My TV runs Linux. <laughs> Hey now, that's all I can say. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> well, my mom's yep. TV runs Linux. <laughs> I don't have a TV. Well, my TV is like YouTube. Yeah, because that's I mean, that's that's the way it rolls. That's where I get yeah. That's I, where I get entertainment. Um, apparently they there's a service right now here, which is our local version of Netflix, unoriginally titled iFlix. Huh. Mm, yeah, and uh. I I don't know how much or like what's the roster of shows or whatnot. There's a free trial. I'm not okay. sure. If, uh, that's some I, like I want to push for the trial just to see because they're saying it's only 129 pesos a month. Ooh. Yep, a month, and they can connect up to five devices, pretty much like you know. Um, it's I want to check more or about Netflix it. or whatever. Yeah, I mean it's a. Uh, they're saying TV shows and movies and whatnot, but I don't like the title iFlix. But hey, I mean, come on, I'm not gonna be picky here. But I want to see, of course. What I'm saying again is, a platform is only as good as the content that's in it. Yeah, uh, iFlix. Spell it. A I F L I X. That's it. And now, because is this like I want to see it? Will this be an okay? platform here in the country for streaming like am i gonna have another different another form of entertainment <laughs> aside from freaking youtube <laughs> is that uh, youtube is my main source of entertainment right now i'm enjoying it immensely but right now i mean having having uh transformers revenge of the fall in front of me being sold by iflix is like nope <laughs> we'll see media room I'm not uh, sure if it's gonna integrate. They, yeah, they're saying integrate five devices. I'm not sure. Ah, okay. Um, all right. Doctor Who, Sherlock, New Girl, Always Sunny, Big Bang Theory, Homeland, American Horror Story. Meh. I want to try it out. Yeah, we should do a report on it and tinker with it of sorts if we can. All right. Hmm. Other other news, other news, uh, other things. Uh, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, sorry. Um, uh huh, uh huh. Okay, now I was looking at Netflix. They're planning to expand, but man, yeah, they're not. They're not gonna be here anytime soon. Yeah, they are not prioritizing this market. Yep. And, and, and content, content producers complain about piracy. <laughs> I hate that. I hate how they complain about piracy and not have Netflix in places that pirate like nothing else. It's I mean, fucking you retarded. You have iFlix. <laughs> you have iFlix, so. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have Daredevil. Right? Again, it doesn't have Daredevil. Is the content you're in. <laughs> you're only as good as the content you're in. Or the content that you have in it. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But yep, it, that's something that people don't get. Yeah. Or content creators don't get. You have to be in places. like You just don't have to think about your content, but your channels of distribution. Because that's what prevents piracy. <laughs> if we had Netflix in the Philippines, I wouldn't have fucking pirated Daredevil. Amazing show, by the way. <laughs> plug, plug. <laughs> But, you know, plug, plug. And it's sad. And I'll probably watch it by now because you know my current stance right now, right? If I don't have it, I'm not going to even pirate it. Yeah, but, yeah, right? I wish I can. I mean, I wish I could download it or anything, but, you know. Yeah. I yeah. should probably just, you know, do a marathon of something. Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> That's an act of <laughs> defiance. <laughs> Against content <laughs> producers that complain about piracy, but make sure that Game of Thrones isn't available in the Philippines for digital download. <laughs> uh, can you subscribe to HBO? Not the HBO local, HBO. 
HBO Go, is it? Not Go. There's another one. I have no idea. Yeah, I think HBO Go. Yeah, I could subscribe. Oh, no, HBO Go is for the states only, so, yep. Sucks to be them. Uh, <laughs> right? And, and, and they fucking complain, you know, the, the, we, we did an episode on this, right? Like piracy and. Yeah. And getting content and getting stuff to people that are willing to pay the, we talked about this on Bodega Nights. I think Spotify has a really good pricing uh, model. Yeah. Where if you're in the US, you pay more. When you're here, you pay less. They have to do something about that free component. Hmm. Because that's what artists really complain about. Like Taylor Swift is cool ah. with Spotify, except that, except for the free component. Because it devalues music or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it depends. Wait. Uh... HBO Now, I think, is available to everyone. Huh. HBO But now. to watch it on your TV, you need to have, like, Apple TV. Eh. Uh, coming soon to Android and Chromecast at fourteen ninety nine a month. That ex- that's a bit pricey. My God. fourteen ninety nine. What? That's expensive. Yeah. It's, like, really expensive. That is expensive. Wrestling is... Seven, I mean, WWE Network is seven ninety nine. <laughs> Well, again, but again, pricing for mm. the market. Know your market. Mm. I mean, every uh, they know that people are gonna shell out that much money for Game of Thrones anyway. Hell, I'm willing to shell out that money for Silicon Valley, which is a better has having a better season than Game of Thrones right now. Still depressing, but you know, <laughs> having a better season than Game of Thrones. Which anyway, not not not. But let's go back to something Linux. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was talking about my MK802 earlier. Um, I've, I got Debian 8 on it, uh, mm-hmm. because like the last, uh, the last Debian, um, the last Debian image from the, the guy that compiled it, this guy named RM or whatever, this Russian dude, uh, the image for the MK802, the, the server image for the MK802 is Debian 7. Uh, you can, like upgrade it to Debian 8. You just need to change like a line in your sources.list file or uh like email us contact at channel14.com and uh I can like send you a copy of the image file that you can just put on a micro SD and it'll run on your MK802. Yeah. Like a little PSA kind of thing. Yep. Hmm. So your MK802 right now is oh, um, it's, it's on Debian stable. I mean, do you still plug it in your computer, a computer on your TV and stuff? Never did. Uh, n- never did. It's plugged into my router. Oh, okay. Like I use it as my home server. I you're not gonna use it for you're not oh because you're using that's what we used to do before, right? We what? plugged it into TV just to see. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, what, what I do with it is, like, you can install Linux distro on it, right? So I, um, installed Debian, at the time it was Debian 7. Um, and it's just like a command line thing that you SSH into from another laptop. Uh, set up, uh, an NFS share, set up a Samba server. That way, like, everybody in the house has, a common storage for stuff that we want to pass around. So, you know, if dad needs to get a photo or something, he just grabs it from the MK802. Uh, that's yeah. where I seed distros. Like, it's, it's an always on, it's, it's an always on computer. It's like a, yeah. Which it's a doesn't server. have, um... it's a file server. It's a, it's a NAS pretty much. It's an ads with a torrent thing on it. Ah. And low power consumption. Yeah, it runs on a power bank. Well, it can run on a power bank. Which is really cool. Like, have a little, you can have like a little web server in something that fits in your pocket. Like, wow. I'm still amazed by it. (laughs) You have that for a year now, right? More, right? I don't know. Wait, let's, let's oh, look I mean, here. Around a year, yeah. Huh. Uh, 
Once I get, because uh, one of the things I on my wish list is a TV in my own room where I could hook up the computer so I could watch YouTube at a bigger screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, now that I, I'll, hmm, I could power that TV using MK802. Yeah, yeah, but then like it runs an old Android though. It runs an old, old, old Android build in its default. What's it? No, no. If if you use your MK802 for as your server, I'm gonna see if I could turn it into my entertainment thingamabob. Uh, yeah, but don't plug it into your TV. Well, Why? unless you're gonna use Android, because um, apparently, uh, like the other distros aren't um TV friendly. Well, they are, but they aren't at least for the MK802 that I have. And I'm not sure about like the later, um, the later versions of it, but like for the one that I have, um, the distros that run on it are say like Ubuntu 1204, which is kind of old, and um, mm. video playback might be a bit choppy uh, at 1080 or 720, you know. So, and I also want to wonder if it could, cause like you know, Steam, not Steam Stream, <laughs> um. When you can steam, stream a Steam game by a different device, right? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that, I think I could make that work. Hmm. Like, land streaming of a Steam game. Like, I want to see if I can make that work using that as a device, which is very, very, going to be very tricky. Or just get a Raspberry Pi. It's better supported. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just get the Raspberry Pi. It's expensive, though. I mean, pricier, at least. Not expensive, but pricier than... Um, we'll see. Yeah, you know. It's a few, a few hundred pesos. Wait. Uh, yeah. Oh, how much is, how much is, uh, how much is a Raspberry Pi? I think 500 is the main board. Um, then, or a thousand, and then to add components, you know, just a couple of hundred pesos here and there. Wait, wait, a thousand pesos for, like, the main board? Yeah. Uh, really, that's, like, really cheap. Hmm? Well, how much is a MK802, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the, um, it's, the Raspberry Pi is about a thousand five hundred. The MK802 is about the same price. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, let me let me let me right, check. Uh, the MK802 is like 400 pesos or something. Nah, oh, dude, I got it's like 2,000 or something, like one five to 2,000. Hey, it's not worth it, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna get the pie. <clears throat> mm, Raspberry pie pie. Two is it's about 2,000 pesos. Plus 1,200. Yeah, 1,200. Uh, pie two, I'm not sure how much. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the the website that I buy Chinese goods from they list the Raspberry yeah. Pi 2 Model B at 2200 yeah and then there's also 2.5 yeah the A plus they already, price at yeah. 1500 and their starter kits being sold for around roughly $100 huh $100 which I'm pretty sure yeah but then a computer for $100 I don't know man I'm, I'm like more and more I'm not uh, a fan of like these little arm based computers because because eh they're still really underpowered <laughs> no I mean what I want to use a Pi for is something to do with a camera related thing ah uh, yeah like I want to mm. develop something Raspberry Pi related like trigger or something oh yeah but I guess most that of those sense. things are, are, are but most of those things are are Duino not really Raspberry Pi. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. I know I had one more thing, but like Linux related to talk about, but I can't quite remember. Do we? Was there something else? Do we? I don't know. Did you make a list? <laughs> list. <laughs> you speak from the heart. What? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, we've been running Wait, for. Here's we've a, been Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, here's a nice thing you could make with a Raspberry Pi. Build a robot that reads audiobooks or speaks your tweets aloud. That's amazing. That'd be <laughs> really annoying. 
Uh, there's also a set up your personal web server, which pretty much you did. Here you go. Here's what I wanted to do. Use a Raspberry Pi to automate time-lapse photos. That's it, man. That's it. I'm sold. I want to do something like that. Huh. Or use a Raspberry Pi for wireless tethering, USB backup, and other things. That, okay, that's already an amazing thing for, like, for photography. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, what for and, automated yeah. backups? Hmm? For automated backups? Uh, yeah, like, cause, uh, in some ca- cameras, most, not, not all cameras have like two USBs, uh, two, two SD card slots or card slots, right? Yeah. Cause, um, uh, if for pro level cameras, you have two SD card slots and one is like all the raw files, the other is a JPEG file or others are like, it will write raw files at the same time. So you have like a backup, okay. but not all cameras have that. So what this guy did was, um, he has another, like, he turned the grip into a Raspberry Pi where you could save your, some of his photos via USB. And like, it's plugged in directly on the computer and it put a USB slot and then it records the, like, like very much a good way of tethering a camera to the computer. That's really without, cool. That's really cool. And then, also <clears throat> use it for um what do you call this for those time lapse and whatnot hmm. he made it a nice good and and he designed it using a rubber uh, using one of them grips that photographers use like battery grips he removed the battery grip internals and put in a raspberry pi like for me amazing idea yeah yeah hmm so oh, somebody uh, made, yeah that's it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, looking at other lists that what people are doing with the Raspberry Pis. Somebody made a deviant art picture frame and an arcade table. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is. Yeah. That's but yeah, standard. something that would control like time lapse. Man. Yeah, for me. Yeah. But for me, something that could do that. I mean, A level shit, what he did with his USB and DSLR. But, you know. Uh, th- if those things are possible, that's some a project like I want to get my hands into. Yeah, and and it's going to look really cool. Like when you when you have projects and stuff, they're like, oh, what's that? Uh it's Linux. Picture. Yeah, on my camera. <laughs> Should totally do that. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, for now, you could uh, check us out at channel14.com. Anything you need over there, you could support the show. By, you know, clicking some of the Amazon affiliate sites. And we also have a YouTube page. Yeah, we totally do. Um, slash user slash watch, watch, watch. Channel14.tv. Watch, watch, watch. Watch, watch, watch. Um, yeah. what are other shows that we have to endorse? Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the gaming guys, man, they, they do let's plays. They call them third world plays. Yeah, third world mm-hmm. plays. Um, what else? Get in. Uh, get in contact with us. Uh, email us at contact at channel14.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash channel14. And uh, all those other things. Everything you want to know about our other shows and everything is at channel14.com. Yeah. Uh, leave a comment uh, or something. Do we, do we need to spell that? I'm thinking, do we really need to spell that? No, not really. What? Channel It's 14? channel how you spell... Yeah. People might be thinking it's the number. Yeah. well... Channel14 is the say- word. Anyway... I, I usually say that work. though, like during our other call to actions on Bodega Nights, I'm like head over to channel14.com, it's channel f o u r t e n dot com. Like, okay, yeah, there you go. All right, so cheers, everyone. Thanks, internet. This far, this is the off-tangent section. Ah, take a sip of water. <laughs> and let's begin. Comics, though, man. Spider-Verse. What the hell? <laughs> the Spider-Verse is over, though, right? Later. Yeah, Spider-Verse is over. It's just that like, it's that was like now that was that like last got. year. Yeah. And it wasn't, it's only it wasn't a that very good event. Yeah, it's it, only it, now it that I got caught up, man. It the, wasn't the it, best event. It was it, so convenient. It wasn't very good. It was so convoluted, man. It was what the hell is happening? Although I do appreciate Spider Gwen. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, Spider Gwen. I kind of like what they did with Spider Gwen that, you know, I was not able to save the Peter Parker in my world and you didn't save your Mary Jane in your world. We should look out for each other. Like, that is sweet as hell. Yeah, it's, it's really like, um, that was one of the, gr- like, really good things to come out of Spider Verse. Though, eh, you know. <laughs> Dan Slot has done much better in Spider Man, right? Um, yeah. You know, his whole Doctor Octopus thing with the Octobots, you know, that was that was much better. I think, like Spider Island or whatever that that was. I think that was Dan Slott and it was really good. But all else, man, Spider Verse is amazing. Oh, Death in the Family finally caught up with Death in the Family. Wait, as Death well. Death in the Family or Death of uh, the death, Family? Death of the Family. Uh. Like, Joker's stepping up his game. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. I know you're not a big fan of the series. No, I, I love... Uh, that's my favorite DC book. Uh, yeah. Like, like Batman is my but favorite not- DC book. It's just that... Um, right, so, so, we're gonna, so I'm going to be spoiling some of the more current comics. So oh, yeah, okay. I haven't, I haven't read the, comic, uh, the current one yet. I haven't got caught up with the current one yet, so go ahead. Yeah. Um... Because we have another Joker story that just concluded um, Endgame. So, like... Uh, oh! Yeah, I find that one really good. Because, like, there's some some moments in it that I really like. But, like, Death uh, Death of the Family has a really good insight. Um, like, Scott Snyder has this really good insight in it um, about how, like, does Batman actually need the Bat Family? You know, mm-hmm. that's... That, that's which is what I like question. about that. Yeah, which is what I like about that. Like, he raised a question, what, I mean, what are you because of the family? Yeah. Like, what 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 does it make you because of this family? Are, are, are you better off when you're operating alone? Are you, or do you use your family as a crutch? Like, all of those things. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, the the bad family only makes Batman better, because I'm just sick and fucking tired of dark Batman. <laughs> Let's give him happiness. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, well, not necessarily give him happiness, but like, I'm just sick and tired of, you know, the way Batman has been portrayed ever since Frank Miller. Yeah. Like <laughs> Batman, <laughs> Batman. Like, we could have a snarky. I I really want to have a snarky Batman. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, he doesn't not need really, to have quick quips. But <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need to have no. He doesn't need to have quick quips, like snarky in the sense that really, that's all you're gonna do. Like when he's facing someone, like that. That's the best you could come up with. You're facing me, something like that. Well, you know, the best Batman for me was uh, right before the New Fifty Two, when Scott Snyder was writing Detective Comics and Batman was blasted into the past to fight through history or whatever. Like, while that was going <laughs> on, um, I remember everybody thought Batman was dead, but he was, like, fighting his way through history like um, like the thing was, or like the Fantastic Four were in that. Anyway, um, what was going on in Gotham at the time was uh, Dick Grayson took on the mantle of Batman and fought yeah. alongside Damian Wayne. And, you know, that, like, for me, Dick Grayson was the best Batman that we've had. Because he that's, was fun. Let's not name Bruce Wayne or... Oh, okay, okay. Uh, because we've had other Paul, Batmans, Across right? the like, board. Yeah, across the board, he's your favorite Batman. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, a number of people have taken up the mantle, right? Like, um... Uh... Azrael, uh was Batman for a mm-hmm. while. Um... Now... Uh, a big spoiler alert again for like current comics. Um, at the end of Endgame, it appears as though Batman is dead. Of course, he isn't, but it appears as though Batman <laughs> is dead, and somebody else has to take on the mantle. And I'm really excited to see how this turns out because the person that oh wait 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 yeah Endgame is the one he was stuck in the cave. Yeah yeah yeah. And uh, I'm just gonna stay here for a while. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, that one. All right, all right. So yeah, I think I've caught up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so you know that the last panel is so, yeah. James Gordon being like being like stepping into the bat suit, right? Uh huh. Yeah. I'm excited to see that 
because it's going to be written by Scott Snyder, I hope. Is it going to be written by Scott Snyder? Because if it's written by Scott Snyder, I know that he he was the guy that wrote Dick Grayson as Batman. And so he's going to yeah. have we're going to have a fun Batman. Well, not necessarily fun Batman, but not sad Batman. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Like we might have like an angry Batman, but then I'm not I I, I don't know if that's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> I I want a cocky Batman. I seriously I don't know. It's just because probably my love for Deadpool because Deadpool is the cockiest son of a gun ever. <laughs> but like, and and good God, Deadpool kills literature. I, Deadpool uh, kills the Marvel Deadpool universe. Kills, and illustrations, amazing, amazing. Like I w- there's a reason why I was on a sudden like comic book catch up. Was um, I was thinking, you know what? How come Deadpool hasn't, you know, came face to face with some of the li- uh, like literature characters? It's possible now because of copyright and all that. You know, it could go up against Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, or, yeah, because because the public like, domain Roman characters. mythology. Yeah, or or Roman mythology or 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 Greek mythologies or that. How come he hasn't he- been face to face with them? And then I googled it. Deadpool versus Sherlock Holmes and Sherlock Holmes assembled the squad with Mulan in it. I'm like, oh my god, I love Deadpool. This guy though, this guy. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um Sherlock Holmes almost defeated him. Yeah, my, my <laughs> thing with my thing with Deadpool though is that like Deadpool really depends it really depends on who's writing, you know. That's because, for any comic, I would say. Yeah, but then they say like um like Deadpool is particularly hard because of because of the nature of Deadpool's character. Like you have to yeah you have to be able to balance it. You have to be able to balance yeah. his sort of insanity because if you break the fourth wall too much, then you just have like a really dumb character. Or, or you won't find the breaking of the fourth wall humorous. It's just what the hell are you doing? It's very pathetic. Yeah, yeah. It's but I think I, like I a, think for yeah. illustrations and killing the universe, uh, I think I think it was really okay. Oh yeah, Deadpool kills the Marvel universe was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I don't know. I love illustrations because when I I guess because when I thought of it, wow, it exists. But um, it's just what the hell was he doing? And it's just amazing. <laughs> and the red box that was interesting. Hmm. That he was talking to a red box. So, so you're, you're pretty much caught up on comics now, right? Not super caught up. Like, I'm still confused at some of the timelines and whatnot. I mean, I'm not into the, I, I didn't follow some of the things that I'm not a big fan of. Not, not necessarily a big fan of, just haven't understood them from day one, say, like Swamp Thing. Oh, man. You've been, you've been doubting. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You, you were a big Swamp Thing fan. I'm like, uh. <laughs> well, well, um, what's it? Uh, Swamp Thing from, like, uh, issue one of the New 52, from, from one to, like, 18, uh, which was written by Scott Snyder, and Animal Man, uh, from one until, I, I believe it's 29, which was written by, um, what's his name? It was written by Jeff Lemire, and, like, I'm a really big fan of Jeff Lemire's work, and, like, they sort of cross over for the first 18 issues. So it's, it's really good. It's really no. good. So that's why you're using your mind. <laughs> yeah, man, because it's... Your two favorite comic writers are on a crossover right now. Well, no, this was like in right at the beginning of the New 52. Oh, okay. Uh, this was the one when you were raving about, because it's like, when New 52 happened, we were back at comics, right? We were, we were reading again, and you're like, uh, Swamp Thing is amazing. And I'm like, okay. Now, don't get Swamp Thing, but hey... Eh, you know, yeah. Well, what's it? Now everything is changing again. Ah! Like they're, uh, what's it? <laughs> <laughs> um, DC had like an underwhelming summer event where they, uh, what was it called? They called it Convergence or something where they, um, took, well, they, they pretty much brought back the multiverse again. Um, so they just undid Flashpoint. Yes and no, because the Flashpoint okay. universe is there. Like, like it, it, it was an underwhelming event, but I l- really like the idea of what DC did, right? Because, um, 
when people did New 50, when, when, when they did the New 52, people were complaining about like their old continuity being gone. And now that, yeah. um, and you know, you, you obviously can't go on with the New 52 forever because, you know, if you manage to hit like 600 issues in, it's not going to be the New 52 anymore. Yeah. So, um, what DC did was they brought everything back, put it into like a clump and said, fuck it, everything is in continuity now. So like all of those. <laughs> <laughs> so mold it into a huge clay and throw it to the wall. That's our continuity. <laughs> Pretty much, man. It's amazing, right? Now Red Sun Superman is in continuity. Like, here you go. <laughs> And just everything. Pretty yeah. much everything. Yeah, everything is um everything is canon. They're like, fuck you all. Everything is canon. And um, Is this a response to Marvel? Because and what they did to Star Wars. Uh that that entire thing, not canon anymore. This new thing we're creating, that's the new canon. Yeah, I DC's know. response is like, we're gonna make everything canon. Yeah, it was, it's it's interesting. And um the um, who, who's in charge now? Uh, Dan DiDio, I think. It was, it was, it was either Jim Lee or Dan DiDio that said that, uh, the, the new direction for DC, quote unquote, isn't going to be so focused on continuity, but more on telling the stories that the authors or the creators want to tell. And we'll figure oh, out the continuity nice. later. Nice. Nice. I, I actually like that approach. Yeah. I mean, they, they, um, they kind of have to with like the rise of independent comics. Yeah. Like these are, you know, comics that pretty much give the creators freedom to, you know, like image, um, they do whatever, um, you know? And yeah, pretty much the same as in gaming. Your indie crowd is the one that's very experimental. Yeah, the indie scene is where, indie gaming scene is where like you have stuff like, Thomas was alone where you just have a bunch of boxes jumping around in Papers, Please. Jesus, Papers, Please. Who would think a game about stamping passports would be a good game? Yeah. You know. So, so I'd like, I'd like to think in the indie crowd in comics as well is the one that's pushing things further. Uh, yeah, in, in, in a lot of ways. But it's, it's really cool, right? Because like, there's a lot of crossover between the indie guys and the the big two right because mm-hmm. um because there, there really isn't very much money in indie comics i don't think uh like uh, yeah you know like, like what was, in what was gaming game? where you could have minecraft or something yeah well, yeah you can have minecraft um with the exception of the walking dead like what are the other really big indie comics that have made you know that have made the mainstream uh, presence yeah right and the ones that are not graphic novels, just actual ongoing series, right? Wait, what? What? Huh. what? Not not just one shot graphic novel, but an actual um, ongoing series. Uh, you mean? No, because I'm thinking on top of my head. Um, what else aside from Walking Dead? Yeah, and even like like graphic novel, or even like those self contained graphic novels. Like I, I really can't think of any like huge successes from the indie. Like scene, the one shots. Is it? What do you call that? No, is that? Oh, that's Vertigo. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, um, you're right. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, by, by the way, uh, one shot refers to a single issue that has a standalone yeah. story. That's a one shot, right? Uh, yeah, your one shot, right? Now, like like a a trade paperback, a, a trade or a hardcover, a graphic novel. Like generally, these guys are collections of and your serials. Yeah, uh, so, so, so say like The Watchmen, for example. Um, The Watchmen, which we consider like a graphic novel, is pretty much a collection of a 12 issue miniseries. Yeah. Uh, um, a one shot. Which came out you know, in the 80s. Yeah. yeah. A one shot is. Now, now like we a, call it one shot because it's now distributed that way. Well, yeah, but then, there we go. But yeah, it spawned, yeah, yeah, it spawned new comics. Anyway. Wait, huh? No, yeah, there's new Watchmen comics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, what's uh, it? Before Watchmen, um, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't very good. Like they're yeah, it, it wasn't very good. <laughs> An interesting yeah, idea, uh, but not very good. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, going back to story arcs, 
aside from Deadpool um, illustrations uh, and the Spider Verse and some Batman stuff, like um, also like uh, I didn't know YouTube also has a treasure trove of 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 like channels dedicating to explaining or fast forwarding you to some of the timelines if you're confused. Yeah. Uh, what's what's his name? Um, Comics Explained. Comics Explained Explained mm-hmm. is pretty good. Uh, what I'm watching is Comic Storian. Yeah, Comic Storian is also really good. But, um, uh, like, this... I finally understood the Guardians of the Galaxy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to invest time with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And because when I watch, I was, I was telling my sister, um, I finally completed watching Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. It was funny. I, I found the movie very funny because of Chris Pratt. Yeah. Had it been a different uh, had it been a different um, actor, say it's not Chris Pratt, it's all gonna be dry. Mm. It's all going to be dry. It's go- like, what the hell is this? Why am I watching this movie? But because of Chris Pratt's humor and their nostalgia play, like mm. nobody's gonna understand or no- nobody's gonna give two craps about the story anyway. Let's just put so much nostalgia and Chris Pratt's humor, and let's hope it flies. For uh, mm. some odd reason, it does fly. <laughs> Oh, uh, Nerd Sync is pretty good too. Uh, for comics explaining. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. he, he's, he's, uh, he, he's sort of like, he's sort of like Matt Pat in a way. Where oh, okay. he's just a guy that does a lot of research. Yeah, over research. <laughs> yeah, like a, one of those over researchers. I haven't actually checked out Matt Pat's new movie blog, uh, new movie channel. It's, it's alright. Game Theory. It's, Game Theory It's weird. Better. You know, it's like, uh, Harry Potter isn't the chosen one or whatever. Like, okay. Ah, because it was Neville Longbottom. <laughs> yeah, he put forward that theory. Mm, yeah, I know the theory. Yeah. No, it was always uh, been Harry Potter. His his um uh, his thing on his thing on the Oscars was really good. He had like this thing on how to win an Oscar. Oscar bait? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, like, because he followed all the formulas. Yeah, like how how to how to get an Oscar pretty or how how to get best picture, how to how to win best actor, best actress. And speaking of Matt, but I'd hire that guy to be my analytics consultant if I have a sports team. Um, <laughs> I I, uh, I hear the Clippers need uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they need a lot of new things. <laughs> I hear they really a like their developers. Of new 